<laughs> Holy! Yeah, no, 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 that's good. Oh, no, that's... that's going in this oh, no. special effects version of Brad and Lucy right there. That was great. Anyhow, that was good. That was awesome. Do 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 I'm Brad. I'm doing Brad things. Jay West, if you're watching, my friend. I am the best Lucy ever. Jay West is one of our subscribers, one of our fans, and he sent us a whole bunch of shit from the states. Sent us a whole including box this of wonderful shirt and that shirt, which is already covered in dog hair. <laughs> we thank you, my friend. That was freaking awesome. Yeah, it is absolutely. And amazing. he sent us this mug. These mugs. These mugs. Lucy, dogs, and weed. Distracted <laughs> by dogs and weed. Was that what it says? Or? Yes, yes. Oh, should I do that? Oh, no, let me see. Let me see here. Always distracted by dogs and weed. Yes. We have dogs and we have very, weed. Very, very fitting for you, Brad. Yes. That was a really thoughtful gift you sent us, my friend. Really thoughtful. Thank you so much. Lots of shout outs for Jay West. We'll probably see you on oh, the yeah. live. So. If you were here, we'd give you a big kiss and hug. Yeah, and we'll we'll show some more of your stuff uh, as we go along here. We yeah. really appreciate it. If you guys want to send us stuff, just our <laughs> mailing address is in the description. We like gifts. We love gifts, and we'll share it with you and we'll give just, you a big shout out. Just mail us a letter and a picture. It's, it's like good. Christmas. <laughs> I know you can write an email, but letters yeah. are personal. And we'll be playing uh, the cowbell you sent us there, Jay West, on our live as well. So Lucy's going to learn the cowbell. Ding. Anyhow, enough about Jay West. We love him. We only love people who we send us gifts. Do I wear it around? Like that? <laughs> the cowbell, get it? Oh, okay. No, that'd be funny. Wear it around my neck and then. Get it? No. It doesn't make a good beer mug, but it does make a good coffee mug. But I've got beer in it, so that just means I have to pour more. That's all. <laughs> We've had a huge ice storm here, so we're all kind of. Locked into our houses. Yeah, so Canada. For the rest of the day. Until it starts to, it's going to turn into rain and then it's all going to melt again. Canada. Yeah. It was a frozen hostile wasteland. <laughs> Anyhow, we're I doing noticed. part two, Ricky Gervais. That's actually part three because the fat people thing was in oh, between this. Oh, cut off. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah we, had, we already watched it. So We're watching this whole thing, so we're just doing it in parts, so. So we'll warm up with another section here. So this is just after the fat people thing, and he's going to talk, you know, he's talking about that, and now he's moving into the next section. So He was talking about Brad, and then he's going to talk about something else. Me, you, <laughs> must be talking about dumbasses next. And <laughs> never, never marry a Brad there, people. All right, here we go. Oh God, you ready? Breast reduction to fit into this t-shirt. <laughs> I got a penis reduction. Just have the one now. Here we go. But we've okay. got to do something. We've got to intervene. And people say, no, it's nothing to do with you. It's up to them. It's their body. It's their life. And that's true. But we don't say that about wearing crash helmets. Or if you've got a heroin addict in the family, you don't go, oh, it's his life. He loves heroin. You know, you... Uh, <laughs> You go, no, you've got to stop this. You're, please don't die. And you get him and you throw him in a cupboard for three weeks or something. <laughs> uh, you can't throw a fat person in a cupboard. You're back in like me. But, you know, <laughs> heroin addicts, they don't weigh anything. You can throw them around willy-nilly, right? <laughs> uh, in fact, when they're lying there with a needle hanging out, you just get the needle and flick, and they just go into the cupboard like that, OK? <laughs> fat people, you've got to lure them in. A little trail of chocolates, and they just follow that anywhere, like that. <laughs> but we've got to do something, because... A third of the world are obese, and a third of the world are starving. The fat ones are eating the skinny ones' food, basically. <laughs> I know most of the skinny ones are in Africa, so out of sight, out of mind, I know, but <laughs> no, no. I can talk about Africa like that, because I'm from Britain, and we used to own it. Um, <laughs> we did. When we had the empire, and we ruled the world before you took over, we used to... <laughs> We owned Africa. But then in the 50s and 60s, Africa wanted to be self-ruled. They wanted independence. And they said, look, we'd like to run ourselves. We went fine. So gradually we started giving Africa back to the Africans. And by the 70s, it was totally run um, uh, by the you know, uh, Africans themselves. And of course, in the 80s, we get a phone call. 
Hello? Hello? Who's that? Africa. <laughs> what do you want? We're starving. <laughs> you should have thought of that. <laughs> Before you wanted independence. <laughs> well, we didn't know there'd be a drought, did we? Drought? I'll give you a drought. This is true. When I was a kid, I was about ten, we had a really long, hot summer, okay? And there was a hosepipe ban. You couldn't water your flowers. We've all suffered. <laughs> so, that's true, actually. One long, hot summer, and the water ran out, and we didn't know what to do. We thought, what could we do? And there was people coming around your house trying to tell you how to conserve water. They were saying things like, when you brush your teeth, don't let the tap just run. You know, put a little yep. glass in it. And they came around, they were putting house bricks in the cistern of the toilet to save water. And there was public information films on the, on the television. There was one advert that was like, it was like an animation, and it was like a couple in the bath. And it said, conserve water, take a bath with a friend. <laughs> Which I did. I say a friend, he was more a friend of my granddad's. But, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Ten pounds is a lot to a kid in England. Um, <laughs> what? That's terrible. He taught me a lot, he taught me a lot. Um, <laughs> stuff like, you don't wash it like that, give it here. <laughs> right. No, he was a, he was a, a sweet old man. Um, I used to call him Granddad Charlie. He wasn't my real granddad. He was just an old bloke that lived across the road. He used to come round whenever he saw my parents go out, right? And he'd come round, Mum and Dad out, yeah, oh, right, do you want to see a magic trick? Yeah, he'd draw the curtains, right? And um, he'd make me close my eyes, OK, and he'd sit down and he'd put a, a top hat on his lap, like that, right? A magic hat, right? And he'd go, close your eyes, just... He goes, and feel the magic rabbit. And I used to go up and I used to put... <laughs> I used to go in, I used to feel the little, that weird little thing it was, didn't have any fur or ears, right? And he used to go, and it was scared stiff, it was. It was terrifying, right? And he made a stroke it, and I stroked it so fast once that it was sick all down my... <laughs> shut up, shut up. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oh. Where was I? Oh, yeah, famine. Famine is a problem. Um, which brings me to this next fad that we need to stamp out. Um, this happened Christmas before last. Exchanging gifts uh, with old friends, good friends, um, quite well-off friends, if I'm being honest. Um, I got them a coffee-making machine from Harrods, top of the range. They loved it. Um, they gave me my present. It was just an envelope. I thought, oh, what's this, vouchers? <laughs> Open it up. It wasn't vouchers. Um, it was just a card with a picture of a goat on it. Um, and I said, what's this? They went, oh, our gift to you is we gave a goat to an African family. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm looking at the coffee machine thinking, is it too late to take that back? Is it too late? <laughs> like, what is the one? Oh, um, we, we gave a goat to an African family. Did you? <laughs> oh. So, I've got fuck all then, <laughs> basically. I mean... I don't even know this African family. <laughs> Why would I give them a goat? It doesn't matter. This serves no purpose at all. No, but this is no good for anyone. They're 50 quid down. I've got nothing. The African family's going, not another mouth to feed. Right? <laughs> the goat is going, where the fuck am I? This, what the, this is shit. <laughs> A week ago, I was gambling around the Cotswolds. There was, there was grass and tourists with nuts and... This is a fucking dust bowl. Uh, there's no way that goat wanted to go to Africa. It was basically... No, it was kidnapped. It was abducted. It was put in a sack and bundled on a boat to Africa. Like roots in reverse. There is no... <laughs> there is no way. They went, do you want to go to Africa? He went, definitely not. No, no. Oh, come on. Why didn't you want to go to Africa? Um, lions. <laughs> Come on, why didn't you want to go to Africa? Um, AIDS. <laughs> well, that shouldn't affect you. It shouldn't. <laughs> so just be careful with that charity shit, particularly at Christmas. That's when they get you, they give you a guilt trip at Christmas. All the adverts of a charity at Christmas. You're sitting at home, aren't you? Having your Christmas lunch, loads of food, too much food. Probably going to throw a lot of it away, right? And. Things like this come on the telly. This runs every Christmas day in England. It goes, is there an old lady near you, cold and lonely this Christmas? <laughs> yep, I fucking hate her. 
<laughs> Nosy bitch winds me up all year round. Okay. I can't wait for the cold weather. Um, there's no old lady near me. She died last year of hyperthermia, so result, yeah. Brilliant. Um, oh my God. The other big one is a dog is for life, not just for Christmas. Right behind that, I'm really into animal welfare. And that's obviously aimed at parents whose kids go, can I have a puppy, can I have a puppy? And they go, no, can I have a puppy, can I have a... Oh, and they get them a puppy to shut them up, right? And the kid likes it when it's cute, it grows up, the kid gets other interests, gets bored with the dog, they lumber yeah. the parents with it, the parents get bored with it, they abandon it. 11,000 pets were abandoned in England last year, which is terrible. Yeah. And I think... You know, kids should have pets. I think it teaches them life lessons. I haven't got kids of my own, but I've got loads of nieces and nephews, and they've got kids of their own now. And I want to be a cool uncle and give them what they want, but I want to be a responsible one too and not add to the stray problem. But I think I've solved the dilemma. Here's a tip. This is what I do anyway. You've got to wait till Christmas Eve and always go to an animal rescue centre, not a breeder. And I go along to an animal rescue centre Christmas Eve and I go to the veterinary part and um, they've usually got like a runt who's been born sort of disabled with no quality of life and they're just putting that out of its misery. Right? And I go, no, don't kill that one. I'll take that one. And they go, it's only going to live a day. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So, so, and I run home, I'm going, don't die yet, don't die yet. A uh, little bit of Starbucks, a little bit of Starbucks. <laughs> And I rush in, I call my niece, she comes running, Uncle Ricky, got your puppy. Oh, Uncle Ricky, got me a puppy. Yeah, your best uncle got your puppy. Yeah, go and play with it, quick. Go and play with it. <laughs> and she takes it to bed with her Christmas Eve and she sleeps with it. She wakes up, Christmas Day, it's dead, cold, stiff, gone. So, result, not a problem. And they always come down the next day. They go, oh, my puppy's dead, my puppy's dead. I go, oh, what, the puppy your uncle got you, he did his bit, and whatever happened after that isn't his problem. They go, yeah. And I go, oh, maybe you rolled over on it in the night. Oh, did I? Oh, no. Oh, no. And they, they start going, I killed my puppy. I killed my puppy. I go, no, you didn't kill your puppy. Jesus killed your puppy. <laughs> on his birthday. Because you didn't spend enough on your uncle's Christmas present. <laughs> they usually buck their ideas up the next year. The other big campaign at Christmas, don't drink and drive. Right behind that as well. A lot more stigma attached to that these days. When I was growing up, it was whether you got away with it or not. But people now know it sort of, it's, it wrecks lives. I'd be getting in the car when I was a kid with grown-ups and family. And they'd go, no, you can't, you can't drive. You had too much to drink. And they'd go, that's right, I won't get caught. And, um, and, but now that yeah. people know that's, that's right. And I've done it once, and I'm not proud of it. I'm fucking ashamed of it. Um, and that was Christmas. I wasn't drunk, but I was over the limit. And I took the car out, and I knew I shouldn't. I knew I shouldn't be driving. But I learnt my lesson, because I nearly killed an old woman. And, no, in the end, I didn't kill her. In the end, I just raped her. <laughs> um, what the fuck? What the fuck, yeah. But as I say, nothing came of it. Um, <laughs> Luckily for me, a thousand to one shot, she had Alzheimer's. So, um, <laughs> not a credible witness. Um, <laughs> spiders, oh, spiders, they're always ready, aren't they? Aren't they always ready for, they're always ready for action, a spider. It's always completely fucking ready for action, like that. Always ready for action, always. I mean, some animals are sometimes ready. You startle a cat and it go, oh, for a few seconds, and it goes back to chilled. Most of the time, a cat, it's just laying on the floor, isn't it? Just on its side, all four limbs just stretched out in one direction. You will never see a spider like that. You will never see a spider just lying on the carpet, right? Its head down and all eight legs just stretched out yeah. like that. They're, all, ugh, they're always ready, okay? They're always, and they're always ready in every direction, like the fucking Matrix, <laughs> like that. They don't even have to turn, they've got ten eyes, eight legs and ten eyes. It's over the top, okay? And they're even ready when you don't think they're ready. You can see an empty web, okay? And you go, that spider's not ready. No? Touch the web. What? Touch the web. And it's there. <laughs> uh, I fucking hate them. 37,000 different species of spider. 37,000 different species of spider. I mean, millions and billions of individuals in each species. And that's just one class, arachnid, of one phylum, Arthropoda. There could be five million species of animal alive now on the Earth. Best guess, okay? And that's 1% of all animal species that have ever existed. 99% of all animal species that ever existed are now extinct. And that remaining 1% is five million strong. 
Take one of those species, termites. If we were to weigh every termite alive now, it would be 10 times the tonnage of every human being on Earth. Oh, wow. And it's statistics like that that make me think that this book isn't totally accurate. <laughs> um, It's the book of Noah, the children's edition. Um, I actually got this awarded to me when I used to go to Sunday school every week. I believed in all this till I was eight. Um, <laughs> St Agnes Sunday School, presented to Ricky Gervais, R-I-double-K-I, -I, like a fucking mongoose, right? <laughs> for regular attendance. Not even for being good at anything, just for turning up, right? <laughs> He's always here, give him a prize, he'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's have a look at the evidence. Long, long ago, when God first made the earth, I'll let both those points go, we haven't got time. Right. <laughs> long, long ago, by the way, according to the Bible, is 5,000 years. According to the Old Testament, the earth is no older than 5,000 years old, okay? It's actually 4.6 billion years old. Let's pop that in, pop that. 4.6 billion years ago, when God first made the earth and sky, all right, don't big it up, it's like, it comes as a package really, doesn't it? I mean, do you know what I mean? The sky was never an optional extra. It's like, made you a planet, I can't breathe. Would you like an atmosphere? Of course I fucking would, so. Well done, but <laughs> everything was peaceful, everything beautiful. God made human beings too, and he wanted them to be good like himself. Arrogant. Right. <laughs> but very soon they wanted their own way. They would not listen to God. They became wicked and did wicked things. Look at them doing wicked things there. <laughs> you don't get much more wicked than that, do you? Fuck off. Oh, fuck off, wicked. <laughs> fuck off, wicked. Really? Ah! God just looking on. Oh, carry on. See what happens. See what happens. Oh, see what happens. Yeah. Oh, see what happens. Bloke there running off with a big bag of money. Don't put it in a bank, you cunt. Uh, right. God looked at them and said to himself, They are so wicked, I will have to wipe them off the face of the earth. Really? Really? Straight to genocide. What happened to one verbal and two written warnings? Straight, <laughs> straight to the annihilation of the entire human race because a fatty yellow trousers picked someone's nose. <laughs> really? Fuck. Oh Anger management, Matt. Just <laughs> calm the fuck down. Let's, ch let's just ch let's talk about this. Wow. I read that to Carl Pilkington, right? <laughs> Who is, yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Head like a fucking orange, I know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I read that bit to him. They are so wicked, I have to wipe my face the earth. And Carl said, he sounds gay. <laughs> I said, what, what do you mean? He went, some gays are a bit like that. <laughs> he thought God was like having a hissy fit. Like he's going, they treat me like a bastard. I'm going to treat them like a bastard. I'm going to show them. I'm going to wipe them out. I said, Carl, God is not gay, okay? <laughs> Read the Bible. He hates them. It's true. That's funny. They are so wicked, I would have to wipe them off the face of the earth. And every living thing with them. <laughs> What's the squid ever done? Red Lord has gone mad. What? But he's not gay. God is not gay. But there was one man who was still very good. His name was Noah. He was a friend of God. Just a friend, so don't know. <laughs> Just a friend. A friend with big hooped earrings. <laughs> Rouge. What's he do? He lives in a cave. What's he doing with this? What? Oh, what? What are you doing? 
seeing God. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Handlebar moustache. <laughs> Holding God's hand. Who's wearing a blouse? God is not gay. God said to Noah, I am so angry with men. You mean men and women? Whatever. I am so angry with men that I have made my mind up to destroy them all. I have stretched my bow in the sky, it is a rainbow. That's got to be the world's first pun, hasn't it? <laughs> it will make so much rain pour down on earth that everything will be drowned, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to build an ark. It must be like a big boat with three decks and a roof over it. Yeah, I know how to build a boat, mate. Oh, <laughs> and you will make a door in the side of it. Do you think I'm a complete idiot? I know. <laughs> Noah did exactly what God told him. And then God said to Noah, now, okay, okay, now this is aimed at children, admittedly, but it's taken from the Old Testament story in the Bible, um, but I don't think the author of this book is a zoologist. Um, <laughs> and, uh, as we've said, there could be five million species of animal. I don't think he knows them all the way he backs out very quickly in this next sentence, okay? <laughs> I want you to take two of every kind of animal with you into the ark, two lions, two tigers, two elephants, and so on. <laughs> What? I've got lions, tigers, elephants. So on. <laughs> on you go. Look after them well and keep them alive. And Noah did what God said. Now I wanted to study that scenario. Okay, so God is angry with mankind. He's fed up with them. They're wicked, right? He's going to wipe them out and just start again with Noah and his wife. He's angry with the animals too, for some reason. I don't... <laughs> So he's going to start again with just two of each species. He calls a flood, they build an ark. Now he goes, right, two of every species, two, just two, right, quick, first two. Oh, there's a stampede. Two elephants, two toucans, just walking. There's <laughs> no rush. Just strolling, baby. <laughs> I think this one is a bit more concerned than this one. This one's probably going, should we fly? <laughs> nah. No? <laughs> nah. I could do this all night. <laughs> no? <laughs> nah. <laughs> sure? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we... Oh, we've got wings. <laughs> oh, we've got feet as well. <laughs> Why don't you want to push in? That elephant's looking at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I fucking am. <laughs> it, it <laughs> If you try and push in, I'm going to stamp on you, you, you big-nosed twat. <laughs> Hold on, who are you calling big-nose? <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's just pot calling kettle black. What the fuck does that mean? What does pot... Well, you know, if a pot's... Black, I'll forget it. I can't forget it, I'm a fucking elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
two camels, two lions, two ostriches, two leopards, two tigers, two zebra. Ah, here's the crux of my point. Just one species on the ark at the moment, the giraffes. They got their first longer legs, okay? Five million more species to, to get on there. So two of it. So two, two animals on the ark at the moment, 10 million more animals to go. 10 million more of those, okay? 10 million, okay? As far as 10 million of them to get on there, just two on there at the moment. <laughs> Look how much room they're already taking up. <laughs> It's at a third <laughs> capacity. <laughs> What's it going to be like on there when these two fat cunts get on? <laughs> <laughs> then God bent the bow of his anger and the rain came flooding down, covering the earth with water. It rained for 40 days and nights. The flood water rose higher and higher until it covered the tops of the highest mountains. Every living thing was drowned except Noah and the animals in the ark. And the fish. They were fine, weren't they? They were fine. They were loving it. They were better off. In fact, all the sea creatures. I mean, mountains underwater, their domain had increased like tenfold. Yeah. Also, it's so much more interesting. You've got crabs going, I'm on a fucking mountain. This is amazing. I never want this flood to... I've never been up here before. I think of that when you see on the news, like if there's a little um, village in Gloucester flooded or something. And it's really sad. You see people, they've lost their homes and they're in dinghies and they're carrying their pets. And you see a little row of antique shops completely underwater, and I think of a fish just looking in the window of that antique shop for the first time. <laughs> so that's a chaise long. <laughs> for 150 days, the earth was covered with water. Then Noah opened the window of the ark and looked out. The water seemed to be going down, but how could he be sure? Well, ask God, you've been chatting to him all the way through. Why are we... <laughs> Why are we getting cryptic all of a sudden? He sent a raven out, but it soon came flying back. It could find nowhere to settle. Noah waited another week. Can he send out a dove? Why did the raven lose his job? <laughs> but the dove came back too. See, the raven wasn't bullshitting. This is... There was still no dry land anywhere. But one day the dove flew out and... Why did the dove get a second go and not the raven? <laughs> Racist. <laughs> But one day the dove flew out and brought back a green olive branch and no one knew that God was no longer angry. Then God told Noah to let the animals out of the ark. They must once more fill the earth with living things. The first thing Noah did was to build an altar. He offered a sacrifice to God to thank him for saving them. And Noah said, I will make a pact of friendship with you. I will never again send a flood to destroy the earth. The rainbow which I put in the sky will no longer be a sign of my anger, but a sign of peace. It will be a sign of my friendship with men. <laughs> that is... That is... That is... <laughs> that is how it is used today. They took it literally. <laughs> it will be a sign of my friendship with men, which begins today, and which my son Jesus will one day prove by shedding his blood for men. Who? You'll see. There, was, there wasn't a teaser campaign in the Old Testament. Like, <laughs> coming soon, the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you have done wrong and you are feeling very sad about it, think of the rainbow and the peace which God wants to put into your heart. He has promised to be your friend, promised to be his. And that's just one of 12 in the Dove Book series. Um, I've only got one, number nine now. Although I think my favourite would be number eight just from the title, Jesus and the Cripple. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Oh, God. That's good. Okay. Okay, I remember somebody saying you should watch that clip. Um, so that was obviously included in this show, but I'm glad it was in there. That's fucking awesome. Dissecting a child's book like that? Yeah. It's just awesome. And was it just me? Or did both those lions have manes? Oh, the, I, I, didn't, I didn't see it, but you caught it, so it's possible. Yeah. Female lions don't have males. Yeah. Have manes. Yeah. That, that would mean it was two males in the picture. I, I, obviously I, I there's could a, have seen it wrong. Obviously, he pointed out a lot of contradictions. So. I know. Well, it's a good yeah. point, though. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
This I could have told you that. Oh my god. I was raised in a religious household, and now I'm not. <laughs> and my mom's still very religious, and she doesn't talk to me anymore because I'm not. So, so uh, feck religion. If you're religious, God love you. <laughs> Anyhow, that was good. That was awesome. Yeah, that was really funny. Yes. Oh my god, good yes. belly laugh. So actually, we did more than I thought we were going to do in that clip. So we'll be able to finish that off at some point soon. So uh, I'll put them all together and put links to each part in there. We've done one part plus we've already done the fat people part, and now we've done the Noah part. Yes. And uh, we'll finish it off, and then I'll put it all together, and then you can watch it all together, and you'll be all excited. And Brad can catch his breath. <laughs> All right, see you on the next one. Thank you for all the stuff, Jay West. Need a break, my cheeks hurt. Bye.